here. Come on, have some more. Oh, nice. Yay. Oh. Jane, you got yourself two trips to high sales. Oh, you got Oh, beautiful. I can't Here, come on, have another drink. Let's give her a toast. Oh, yeah, come on. Let's give her a toast. Congratulations. Bye. Bye. All right. Hi, Mom. Aren't you proud of Mommy? That's great. Congratulations. Thanks. Have you been drinking? No, I'm fine. Sure you don't want me to drive? Are you kidding? I want to get his phone in one piece. For she's a jolly good mommy. For she's a jolly good mommy. For she's a jolly good mommy. That nobody can deny. That nobody can deny. That nobody can deny. For she's a jolly good mommy. Stop that, mommy! Bad dream again. Yeah. Hey, listen, everything's gonna be fine. You'll see. Jane, you're going home tomorrow. Everything will be okay. It'll be all right. Just take it easy. Well, what did you expect? A welcome home party? No, I didn't expect anything. It's just it's so good to be home. Yeah, well, you can't stay. What do you mean? I told you on the phone that you can't live in this house. I don't want you here, and Paul doesn't want you here. Julie's dead. Paul's in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Just stay away from us. It's better for everybody. Your stuff is in the storage place. You have the keys. I'll call you a cab. Carol, what am I going to do? I want him to... Let me help him take care of Paul, and he won't. Give them time, Jane. You know, Dave, you change. I don't know, Carol. You should have seen the way Paul looked at me. My own son hates me. It's mine! Ryan, stop it! Stop teasing her! I'm sorry, Jane. What'd you say? I said my own son hates me. And my husband. They don't care about me anymore. Yay! Look, Jane, this really isn't a good time for me to talk. I've got to get dinner ready and control the little monsters here. Just take it easy. You'll be fine. Okay. I'll call you next week. Thursday's good. Let's have lunch. Yeah, okay. Great. And I want you to know you can call me anytime. I'll do anything I can to help. Yeah, right. Bye, honey. I love you. Thanks.
got anything I can do to help? I mean, the first two times I got busted scared me, but not enough to make me change my life. It was part of the denial. The third time around, I got a judge who said enough. Besides one year in jail, he gave me house arrest for two years. With legal fees and lost income, this whole thing could cost me at least fifty or sixty thousand dollars. In the beginning, I hated the church. I was mad. But now, I'm grateful that I got arrested. And that I got this judge. If he hadn't shocked me to my senses, I could have killed somebody or gotten killed myself. Now, I can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. I really want to thank you for being here. Thank you, Richard. Does anybody else have a burning desire to share? Teresa? I'm Teresa. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Hi, Hi Teresa. Um, I'm 18. I've been drinking for three years. Not too much. A couple of beers every now and then. It was uh, the first day after spring break last year. I remember meeting Joey, my boyfriend, after he came back from his vacation. He kisses me, and then he tells me, Teresa, I met this girl. I want to be with her. Then he gets on his bike, and he's gone. I, I thought I was going to die. So I get myself a six-pack, and I drive down to the river where we used to hang out, and I finish it all. I feel better, and I, I don't feel drunk or anything, so I drive back to school. The next thing I remember, I wake up in the hospital with a concussion and a broken hand. I ran into Leslie's Honda as she was leaving school. She was in her car with three other girls from class. They were all injured pretty badly. But Leslie, my best friend, she lost her arm, and her face is now scarred for life. She was so beautiful. That's, that's all I have to share. Thank you, Teresa. Jane, what about you? Would you like to share? I don't need to be here. I'm not an alcoholic. The only reason I'm here is because some judge ordered it. I have nothing to share. Now 
aren't great. Well, that's not surprising. You've been going through a difficult time. But you know you're not alone. Bob, I am alone. Look, you're alive. You're sober. You're dealing with your problems, and you're making good progress. Progress? You call this progress? I have been out of jail for over a year. My husband and my son still won't speak to me, and I keep having nightmares. What progress? Why are you being so hard on yourself? I want my husband and my son back. Okay. What have you been doing about it? I've tried to contact them dozens of times, but they just avoid me. You're trying to get something you have no control over. Why not do something that'll make you feel worthwhile? You've got lots of free time. Why not use it productively? You know, one thing which has helped me a lot in the last couple of years has been volunteer work. You may not be able to help your family right now the way you want to, but you can give back to other people. Hey, why not give it a try, huh? Hmm? Hello? Paul? Hi, it's Mom. Please don't hang up. I want to ask you something. Go ahead. I've started to give lectures to driver's education classes about drinking and driving. And tomorrow I'm going to be at your school. So I thought maybe if it was okay with you and your dad, maybe you could stop by and see me for a few minutes afterwards. Paul, it's been such a long time and I really miss you. Please come. I don't know, Mom. Maybe. Bye. Julie, baby, it's been two years. I'm so sorry. You know, I was in the hospital when they brought you here. I couldn't even say goodbye. I used to think it was just an accident, that it was beyond my control. Now I see that it was my fault. And there's nothing I can do to bring you back. Please forgive me. You weren't even born yet, but during the entire 10-year period of the Vietnam War, about 50,000 American soldiers died fighting in Vietnam. Yet during that same 10-year period, 250,000 Americans died right here as a result of people driving under the influence of alcohol or other drugs. That's five times as many victims on American roads as in the battlefields of Vietnam. In recent years, the laws have gotten tougher, and people are more aware of the problem. But the statistics are still grim. Every year, about 25,000 people get killed in alcohol-related car crashes. That's one person every 22 minutes. Here's how I got into trouble. My first mistake was that I really didn't want to believe I was an addict. I didn't think I was an alcoholic or that I was chemically dependent. I didn't drink every day. My second mistake was that I drank some wine before driving. Just a couple of glasses. I certainly didn't think I was drunk. 
In fact, according to the laws of this state, I wasn't legally drunk. But even so, my driving ability was greatly impaired. I was drinking wine, but it doesn't matter. The amount of alcohol in a 12-ounce can of beer, or a 6-ounce glass of wine, or a shot of liquor is approximately the same. Research clearly shows that at a blood alcohol level of 0.05%, the chances of getting into a fatal accident are doubled. And if this percentage goes to 0.10%, the chances of the driver getting killed or killing somebody else are 12 times higher than with no alcohol in the blood. Alcohol may have an even greater effect on driving when there are other factors present. For example, drinking on an empty stomach or being sick, under pressure, depressed. What if you drink coffee before you drive? It won't help. Driving ability is still impaired. You know, there are other myths about how to sober up, like taking a cold shower or a run around the block. But the only thing that can sober a drunk is time. Therefore, never drink and drive. You know, many of you have already made the decision not to drink, period, much less drink and drive. That's great. But if somebody does drink, there are some things that can be done, like have somebody else drive, or call a relative or a friend and ask them to pick you up. And remember, when somebody is under the influence of alcohol or other drugs, their judgment is impaired. If you think that one of your friends is even a little bit under the influence, you can be a caring friend if you stop them from driving. Now, be very assertive about it. Tell them that you're going to call the authorities and report a drunk driver if they leave. Insist on finding them another means of transportation. You know, a common practice is to have a designated driver who doesn't drink at all and is in charge of driving everybody else home. Another thing for drivers to remember is that their driving might still be impaired the morning after they're at a party. Even after a good night's sleep. You know, if someone had told me what I'm telling you today, maybe my son wouldn't be in a wheelchair. And maybe my daughter would be alive. Beyond the information, beyond the statistics, you should remember that if you get caught driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol, a lot of things could happen to you. You could get arrested, pay a fine, go to DUI school, lose your license, spend a lot of money on legal fees, pay higher insurance rates, possibly lose your job, maybe even go to jail. But the bottom line is this, that none of these things can stop the uncontrolled slaughter on our roads today. The only thing that'll help is if each and every one of us takes personal responsibility for our actions and that we make the commitment never to drink and drive.